Hi everyone, it's me, Miss Branch, the art teacher, here with you of lesson number three, which we're going to talk about shapes, mainly geometric shapes. Now, in this video that you watched already, it talked about a bunch of different shapes. Now, if you took this course during kindergarten, we also talked about the organic shapes, but this project is mainly going to focus on the geometric shape. We'll get to another project where we get to include some organic shapes in our artwork too. But right now we're going to do a geometric shape seascape. Now, a seascape is a picture that has mostly water. It can have some sky, it can have some land, but the land has to be at the edges of the water, like the coast or a rocky mountain hanging over the water or an island. But L's are the kind of things that you will find in a seascape. So let me go ahead and switch my camera so that you guys can see what I have in front of me. All right, so right now, we're gonna need our crayons and our pencil. And here I have a seascape and I put in a lot of shapes. I put in a semicircle, a pentagon, some rectangles, squares, triangles, crescents, trapezoid, trapeziums, um, uh, quadrilaterals, um, four-sided shapes that um, doesn't have any Neat, um, that just um, have four sides can um, sometimes it's not a square or rectangle or trapezium or trapezoid. Those are the four quadrilateral shapes that you're supposed to know. But um, there are lots and lots of all kinds of other shapes. And I like that I add the crescent and maybe we can even add in a few more shapes and some more boats. But this was just one of my papers because normally we do little pictures, half that size. And I said, okay, I did one half that size and I painted it because that's the part two we get to paint. All right, but then I'll say, eh, there could be some more. We can add more boats. We can add more stuff. And that's why I came up with this picture for us to do. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and move these out of the way. And I'm going to get our big sheet of paper and you're gonna need your pencil. Now, we're gonna draw lightly with our pencil, but now I'm gonna draw heavy so you guys can see it. But when before we paint, we're gonna trace it with our crayons. And of course you can choose to use black like I did in my example, or you can use any other color. Let's say the boat is red, you can trace it with red. Or if the boat is gonna be green, you can trace it with green or orange or whatever colors that are in your crayon box. It does not just have to be the black crayon. Although I tend to draw with that just to make sure that you guys can see my lines. All right, so the first thing first, we gotta start with the background. Now the background is the area that is behind. Like when I'm talking about the space behind me, we're gonna near the top, lightly draw a line so you know where your background's going to be. So that's what we're drawing here. And that background is actually gonna become this wavy line right here in our water. So that's where, this is gonna be where, sorry about that everyone. This is where the sky and the ground meet. So this is gonna be our horizon line. This is where the sky and the ground meet. And for us, the ground is the water and anything that's going to be sticking out of the water. So now let's go ahead and draw our lighthouse. I'm going to draw a semicircle. And I'm going to draw this semicircle right here on this line. So there's my semicircle. And now for my lighthouse, I'm going to make a trapezoid. Now a trapezoid is a shape that has two lines going in the same direction and two lines that aren't going in the same direction they're going opposite directions so it's not a rectangle it comes in it's like if you take a triangle and cut the top off so right here we're going to make a tall trapezoid so here's the bottom and then draw one side in coming in and another side coming in like you're making a triangle but instead of putting a point on it you draw a line and this is a trapezoid and then I'm gonna put a triangle on top. I'm gonna to make it a triangle. That's gonna be the roof of the lighthouse. And we can use an arch. An arch right here is like half of an oval. That'll be the door. And I, um, I can add some stripes to it. Some lighthouses have stripes on them. Oops, I forgot to add the windows at the top. Let me draw a rectangle up here. And when you make a mistake, you can use your eraser. 
or when you get ready to color, um, trace it with the crayon, you just don't you just don't trace the parts you want to keep. So there's our lighthouse. Now we're going to go to this um, shipping container, this container ship. And we're going to make a pentagon, which is a five-sided shape. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So wherever you decide to put your, your ship, pick a spot, and I'm going to draw the bottom. So that's going to be the bottom. And we're going to cover that up later when we add our wavy lines. And then I'm going to do a diagonal line out and a diagonal line out. And then I'm going to have them come in and meet in the middle. So here's my pentagon shape. And when we trace it, we're going to modify it. We're going to curve the lines a bit so it looks more like a boat. That's why you're drawing lightly and Ms. Branch is drawing darker, just to make sure you can see it. Because you can see how light my uh, semicircle is for my um, little island that the lighthouse is on. That's what you, I'm going to draw lightly like that. So you can see the lines. So like if I draw light, you can't see the lines, but you can see them because you're at home. Now for the part, um, I guess um, where the, the cabins are on the ship, we're gonna just start a rectangle, but we're not gonna make the whole rectangle because part of the Pentagon is in the way. And then I'm gonna draw a square on top. That's where the captain steers the boat. So here's a square. And then I'll put another little rectangle up top there's the smokestack. And if you want, you could draw a line in the middle where the windows would be. So that's where the windows so the captain can see when he's driving the, the ship. And let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little curve line down here in the middle. Oh, and I can add some circles for some windows on the side of the boat. And I'll do some windows on this side too. So there we go. So we have so we were able to draw a pentagon, which was five sides, then a rectangle, a part of a rectangle, because part of it would be covered up by this boat, and then a square, and then we made a rectangle inside the square and a rectangle on top, and some circles. So all of these so far are geometric shapes, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to make geometric shapes. Those are the shapes that have names. Now we're going to do another ship. This time we're gonna draw a trapezium. Now trapezium is a four-sided shape where none of the sides go in the same direction. So over here, I'm gonna draw my bottom of the boat. That's my straight line. And then I'm gonna draw a line going this way and a line going this way. See, they're not going in the same direction. And notice this line is bigger than this line. That way when I connect, there's another line that doesn't go in the same direction because this line is not parallel to this line. And parallel means that they're going in the same direction, but they never meet. But these lines would actually meet if I kept going, they would meet and make a triangle. All right, so on top of this trapezium, I'm going to add another rectangle or square shape. And then I'm gonna add a rectangle for the smokestack on top. And if you want, you can add a window and you can even add a door and we'll do the smoke later. All right, so now I have the stuff that's in my background and we're gonna come back to the background again because we can add in some clouds, but clouds are a geom uh, organic shape because clouds don't have to be um, any particular shape. I'll go ahead. Oh, well, I did that lightly. I'll do that a little darker so you guys can see. I'll do it at the top edge because that's another trick that artists use to make it look like you have space and that was in lesson four we're going to talk about uh, no lesson seven we talk about space and that's coming up but you can put these organic shape clouds in your picture and they can go off the edge of the paper and you can put some more little squiggly um, lines inside the clouds to help them get, look like they have uh, more form and more character to them. All right, so now we have our background. Now we're gonna work on the middle ground. That's the stuff that's in the middle. So it's gonna be a little bigger than the stuff in the background, even though in real life, they would be smaller than this ship. But what we're gonna do, let's see, I'll put a sailboat here. Now, uh, let's see. I'm going to make a trapezoid. Now, a trapezoid 
is a shape that has two sides going in the same direction, just like when we did the um, did the lighthouse and two sides going in opposite directions. So I have my trapezoid and I'm going to make a rectangle and it's gonna come up and yes, it goes in front of the cloud and yes, it goes in front of the horizon line, which is perfectly fine. This is another um, um, technique that artists use to show things are in front of stuff by overlapping. And when we add, start coloring, um, tracing with our crayons, then we can, um, we can erase the part. So I'll go ahead and erase this part of the cloud because we don't need it. It's in our rectangle. And I'm gonna add a triangle to this rectangle for my cell and this part can get erased. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this part of the cloud too. So I'm gonna put another triangle on this side. I'm gonna make it a little longer. So here I have my sailboat. Hmm, my camera seemed to have frozen. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm hoping. All right, everyone, sorry about that. My camera froze and I thought that um, I didn't want to keep drawing and then not capture it. I'm hoping it captures it because if not, I'll have to redo this video. All right, so here I have a trap. I'm gonna do another one. This is in the middle ground. So I now I have to do something else in the a bigger one, a closer boat than this one. And let's see, I think I'll do the schooner. This is the name of a boat. It's got this long pose off the edge of it. And I'm gonna make that one bigger than this one because this one's in the middle ground. And this one in here, my sailboat was in the foreground and these were in my middle ground. And even though a sailboat is smaller than a schooner, it looks bigger here because it's in the, in the foreground. And my sailboat looks even as big as the ship because it's in the foreground while this is in the background. So let me see, I'll do a schoon the schooner. That's a type of schooner. There's a whole lot of different types of schooners. So I'm going to go ahead and make a big long line and another big longer line. And there's my um, trapezoid for the schooner. And then I'm gonna do two little rectangles. And then I'm gonna draw, um, I forget what this part of the chip is called, but it sticks out. And now I can put a mass and that's gonna be my rectangle. And it has like three mass on, on the schooner. So I'm gonna put another mass real close to this one. And this mass has this first um, uh, sail and it makes a triangle right there. And this um, sail is more like a rectangle. And then the third mass makes a sail that looks like a, tra a, tra a trapezium. You know, a, um, a four-sided shape that has none of the sides going in the same directions. So these two are two different directions. And then what did I, I'm gonna have this one, I'm gonna come out just a little bit more and come in and then come down. So none of the sides are in the same direction because this is slanted like this. So now I have a scoop of my other ship in the foreground and I, I got this in the middle ground. I can add some more stuff in the middle ground or foreground because I have some stuff over here. Um, let's see, I'll do another sailboat because we haven't added a crescent yet. And so that's another shape that we could talk about. So we have a crescent. So I'm going to do, hmm. This time I'm going to do a semicircle. So I have my semicircle. Um, and I have the mass. This, I'm drawing this kind of small. This probably should be um, more closer to the background because of how small I'm drawing it. I'm going to erase this and draw it a bit bigger. So if you already drew yours small like I did mine, go ahead and erase and make it a bit bigger. There we go. And then my mask. 
and I'm going to draw a crescent shape. So I'm going to just draw a semicircle. And if it's okay, if it goes on top of the one in front of it, then I'm going to add another semicircle and make it a bigger one. Then I'm going to do another semicircle, but this time I'm going to make it a, a modified triangle. It looks like a shot spin. Now, all these parts that are inside the, um, the, the sail, I need to erase. And this is another reason why you draw lightly, because anything that you're not going to keep it's easier to erase it when you're done. So now I have this sail. And now I need to add in my wavy lines. And you know what? I'm going to add my wavy lines in with the blue first. Let's see. What's it? That's Cruella and blue. I want a dark blue. Let's see what we have in here. It's dark blue. Oh, that's purple, blue, violet. Oh, that would be dark because it's blue and violet. Indigo's a dark. Oh, indigo's a dark blue. All right, so I'm going to do my waves with a dark blue this time. So now what I'm going to do, move this out the way, and all across the bottom, even though it has a straight line here, I'm going to go ahead and do a wavy line so it looks like it's in the water. And these parts you can erase, or they'll get painted over when we paint in part two. So this one, let me go ahead and make a wavy line across that bottom. I can even add a little wave there. I'm gonna add a little wavy line because they're far away. And it's going across the bottom of those lines. Those lines are going to look like they are underwater and it's just water around my semicircle. So when it comes time to trace these, I don't trace the bottom because they're already under the water. So I'm not going to draw the whole thing. And that one's underwater. Oh, you know, I got some space over here. Let me add another boat. Let's see. Hmm. Well, if I add a rowboat, then I got to put a person in the boat. And I just want it to be geometric shapes. And a human is an organic shape. Let's look. What's, what do I have left? Let's see. We did this crescent. We did this one. We did this one. We did this one. Let me check my other one. Oh, nope, I got the same boats. Oh, I had to have a different sailboat here. And where's my other one? This is the one I drew to take notes. Let's see. Mm, nope, same boats. What about this side? Nope, no other paper. Oh, this side. Huh. Hmm. I want to do one more boat. Oh, let's see. Is there a shape we didn't do? We did. We did square, circle, triangle rectangle, trapezium, um, we did um, trapezoids, we did semicircles, huh. we did crescent, we did pentagon, huh, I'm trying to think, um, I tell you what, I'll just put another little sailboat so then we'll get some more. So here's my trapezium and my rectangle. Let me put this over here so you guys can see. And then my triangle and then another right triangle. Well, you know, I'm put a little triangle right there. There we go, that makes that different. And now I'm gonna add my wavy lines with my crayon. Now, if you got more room, add some more boats. You can even look up pictures of other boats. You might have some more favorites. You might want to put another shipping container in or another tugboat in. It's up to you. All right. So now we're going to do some magic parts in this water. Now, right now, I did all these little waves with the dark blue. What I'm going to do now is switch to my white crayon. Now, yes, it's a white crayon on white paper, but when we paint, it's gonna make an amazing trick. So what I'm gonna do is just put some little waves with the white crayon everywhere, all over the boat, all the seascape, and I said boat. No, we don't wanna draw the waves on the boat. Now, even though you can't see the lines right now, 
you'll be able to see them when we paint our picture. Because what we're doing by tracing everything with crayon, we're making a resist. Now a resist is artwork. Well, a resist is when you use two different mediums. And so the medium of wax and the medium of paint, they don't mix together. So they just kind of like push each other apart. So wherever you put crayon, the paint won't stick to it. All right, I'm feeling all over. I think I got enough little waves. I can feel the roughness of the crayon or the wax on the paper. And you can do the same thing. You can feel it. Oh, you know what I'm else I'm gonna do? I'm going to color in my clouds with the white crayon. So when I paint my sky, that'll disappear. Now I'm coloring them first, even though I haven't traced them with the crayon, because I don't, if I trace them with the black crayon, it'll get kind of like mixed into the um, white crayon and make it gray, grayish. And we want it to be like a sunny day. Now I'm turning my paper because it's easier for me to get to it than twisting my body. So as an artist, you always want to move it, your artwork around. It doesn't have to stay in one direction. It can move around and you don't have to twist your body. All right, there we go. Yep, 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 there we go. All right, so you can just rub your finger on it if you can't see the crayon. And actually, if you tilt the paper a little bit in the light, you might be able to see some of the wax. All right, there we go. So now, hmm, you can use any color crayons to finish tracing your boat. So I think I'll do this one with red. Oh, this is red violet. This is not red, but it's all right. I think I'm gonna do all my sails with black though. I want them to, ooh, could color my sails with the white crayon. Oh, I almost forgot. So yes, before I color them, uh, trace around them, I'm going to color them white with the white crayon. I almost forgot about that part. And then just thing, and then if you don't color the whole thing, it's okay. You can feel it when you're coloring it. So I'm just gonna do the sails. And generally both are kind of like either wood or bright colors. So that um, like if they're out there and during a storm, then you might be able to see them. That's why a lot of ships are, are um, orange and red and bright, bright colors. But then a lot of older ships are all just the wood. Now, if you use up all your white crayon, it's all right. You can always rip the paper back. All right, so there we go. I have three more sails to do. I'll just use this side. I have used up all of my pointy part of the crayon. And I actually like coloring with the back side of the crayon when you're coloring a big area because you can color it way faster than coloring it with just the pointy side. All right, so there we go. So now I can finish tracing my boat. I want my ship to be orange. I'm gonna just use this orange on my ship. I'm going to trace around these circles. And let's see. Ooh. Um, you got lots of choices. You probably got 24 colors. Looks like your friends. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go brown. I'm going to make all my masks brown. Although some, some boats, they're painted white. I decided I'm going to do brown. I'm going to trace them brown. Yep. But it's totally up to you what you want it, your um, colors you want to use, or if you just want to use one color, that is totally fine too. If you just want to trace everything with black, like I did in my example, you can do that too. But we want it to be more fun and more interesting, and we have 24 colors, so let's use them. Oh, I broke my crayon a little bit. I'm pressing a little hard, but you do need to press a little hard 
with your crayon, not too light. And it's okay if the crayon breaks because you can still use it. I think the whole, this whole boat is gonna be brown, but the part that's under the water, I'm not gonna trace. So there we go. And trace that part and trace that rectangle. And I did my sails already. Well, I think I'm gonna trace my sails with the black. Nope, that's blue. All right, there's my black. I'm gonna trace the lines on the outside of the sails with the black crayon. You don't have to, but it's totally up to you if you want to. And I'm gonna scoop my paper over a little bit so I can trace these sails on this side, my crescent shaped sail, and my big triangle. And part of it is behind the sail. So, but I put the part inside I already erased, so I wouldn't accidentally trace that part. And you notice I did not trace the water through the through the sail here. And let's see, there we go. Oh, and my lighthouse. I'll go ahead and trace that with the black. Oh, and I'll go ahead. I'll trace that with the black. Now, do I want to do the clouds with the black? Hmm. I'll trace this part. And the captain window. All right. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what? I think I'll just leave those pencil. Oh, my little island. I'm going to trace that green real quick. All right, so the island. Probably could have did a gray because it looks like it's just a rock sitting out in the water. But I decided to do that green. All right, so this is all of part one. Part two, we're going to paint our boats and things so oh no, that's the same color as the water nope 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 i don't want that one let's see i forgot this boat let's see trace that part just the parts that's not in the water so that's why i didn't trace this bottom part and then trace this one let's see any boats oh i forgot a mass so i'm gonna go ahead and get my brown out and Trace that one. There we go. All right, everyone. So let me go ahead and switch pictures. We put um switch cameras. So part one was drawing a seascape using geometric shapes. And yes, we did include some organic shapes with the clouds. Oh, excuse me. But we're gonna do some more organic shapes for some other projects. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Anyway. So we have our seascape, and in part two, we're going to paint it. All right, so I will see you in the next video.